This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Bishop Marcus A. Johnson, Sr. I'm your privileged host today on the New Harvest Midday Inspirational Meal Time. And this is an incredible time to worship and praise the Lord because he's praiseworthy. This is Passion Week, and today is Good Friday. And so as we review and look forward into the events that took place in the life of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ made the ultimate sacrifice for our salvation, we can't help but praise him. And so let's pray now and ask God blessings upon this mealtime today, and let's get into our lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. It was your idea to save the lost world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, only one son was qualified, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank thee, we bless thee, we praise thee. Jesus, we worship you because you have given us the gift that keeps on giving. Now bless this lesson, sanctify us as we receive it in its fullness, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is good all the time. God is good. We've got quite an extensive lesson to go through today. So I want to go on and get started. Please hit that like button. And I want to encourage you throughout the lesson at any point that something grabs at you, something hits you, something just turns the light on. I want you to live chat and just say, uh, praise God, hallelujah. Or you can say, God is talking to me, or I get it, I understand it. God is worthy to be praised. I want you to interact with me throughout this particular lesson today because Good Friday is a Good Friday. Now, Good Friday was not necessarily good in the sense that Jesus Christ could enjoy it. As a matter of fact, he prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. Nonetheless, Good Friday was good for God because ultimately it was good for you and me. Therefore, we can celebrate and we can rejoice. Hit that like button, somebody, and let's go ahead and let's enjoy our meal. Passion Friday, Good Friday. Let's review the week first. Passion Week begins on Sunday with the pageantry of the triumphal entry and processional with Jesus riding a colt into Jerusalem, officially introducing himself as Israel's long-awaited Messiah and King, while the people shouted, Hosanna, meaning save us. And in the evening, Jesus returns to Bethany, the home city of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus with his disciples. Passion Monday, Jesus curses the fig tree, weeps over Jerusalem, cleanses the temple, heals the sick, and teaches his word. And in the evening, he returns to Bethany with his disciples. Passion Tuesday, the disciples finding the fig tree withered, questioned Jesus who answered them by teaching the kingdom principles on faith and forgiveness. He proclaims a negative fate to the religious leaders that confronted him while Judas conspired to betray him. This was a busy week, but then we come to Passion Wednesday. We've done Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, now Wednesday, Passion Wednesday. Jesus was waiting for his set time of sufferings, deliverances, and glorious increase. Jesus was waiting to minister to the thief on the cross the Old Testament believers in the bosom of Abraham and all who would believe upon him after his resurrection. Jesus, carrying weights of anticipated pain to be rejected of men and separated from his father. Jesus, carrying weights of responsibility as the good shepherd and savior of the world. Jesus, waiting with weights between his triumphal entry and the Resurrection Sunday. We indicated that the Bible is silent about Passion Wednesday. It doesn't give any details of activities or events that took place. And yet we know 
Jesus, who knew where he had been, where he was going, was now waiting with the weights so that he could finish the work that the Father had sent him to do. Passion Thursday. In the morning, Jesus sends Peter and John to prepare for the Passover meal. After sunset, that's early evening, Jesus eats the Passover meal with his disciples, including Judas. In the evening, Jesus washes his disciples' feet before Judas' betrayal. In the evening, Jesus takes his disciples, minus Judas now, to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane, and agonizes in prayer concerning the cross. That night, Jesus, while praying in the garden, is betrayed by Judas with a kiss and arrested, despite Peter cutting off Malchus, the high priest soldier's ear, and Jesus immediately healed him. Jesus just did it the way that the common person, the average man, woman wouldn't do it because Jesus was on a divine assignment. At night, Jesus, arrested by the Sanhedrin guards, is taken before Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest, for an illegal preliminary arraignment, for a kangaroo court is what it was. Before daybreak, Jesus arraigned before Annas and Caiaphas, or should I say arraigned by Annas and Caiaphas in their kangaroo court because it wasn't legitimate, is followed by another disciple believed to be John and Peter, already told by Jesus. Peter denies him thrice till the rooster crowed. Now, Passion Friday. Now, if this were me, I would be utterly exhausted. All of this physical backward and forward, all of this activity and events, even on Wednesday as he's anticipating, emotionally, mentally, I would have been worn out. And guess what? So would you. However, Jesus, who came to save the lost, he maintained his focus. Passion Friday. Point number one. Follow me. It's a whole lot that's going to happen. Passion Friday morning. Jesus is taken from the preliminary arraignment with Annas in second trial before the Sanhedrin and Caiaphas to Pilate, the governor, to be judged and sentenced to death. Now, he's already didn't get no sleep that night because he was going before Annas, before Caiaphas, before the Sanhedrin, and now he's before Pilate to be judged and sentenced to death. Luke 23, verses 1 through 6. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse Jesus, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. They were lying, by the way, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. That he did say, but they knew that that was what he had come to, to proclaim. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? He's asking Jesus that. And Jesus answered him and said, Thou sayest it. In other words, you said it. You're right. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all the Jews, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. Why? Because Pilate didn't want to deal with this. Because Pilate knew that his job by Rome was to keep peace and order. And he never wanted the word to get back to Rome that things had gotten out of hand in Jerusalem. And especially during a time for the Jewish feast. And so he thought, mm, I don't have to deal with this. Point number two. Passion Friday morning. This is still in the morning. Jesus now being falsely accused before Pilate by the chief priests and elders, so condemned Judas for his unjust, so condemned Judas. Let me say that again, that Jesus now being falsely accused before Pilate by the chief priests and elders, 
Now, Judas, hearing all of this, is so condemned for his unjust role until he, Judas, hangs himself. Because when he hears the chief priests and the elders condemning Jesus and knowing he was responsible for Jesus being betrayed, he was condemned himself and he hung himself. Matthew 27, verses 1 through 5. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and really repent, not in the sense of a change of heart, but he became really grief stricken and condemned and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. In other words, he's saying, I don't want to go through with this. I don't want to go through with this. Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. He acknowledges Jesus was innocent. I lied and I betrayed him. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. You handle that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. It's a lot going on on Good Friday. A lot going on on Passion Friday. And this is still in the morning. Point number three. Point number three. Beloveds, it, it was so much activity backward and forward, so much going on. But let's keep on going. We got a lot of ground to cover. Passion Friday. Jesus sent by Pilate to appear before Herod, the Jewish dictional leader over Galilee, who trivializes the case and returns Jesus to Pilate to handle the case. So what's happening here? Pilate, who does not want to deal with this case concerning Jesus because he recognizes this is not an ordinary man and, and, and this, is, this, is, this can go a whole lot of ways, sends him to, Pilate, to Herod. Herod, who don't want to deal with it either. Herod, who says, yeah, right. You think I'm going to handle this? No way in the world. I'm not going to get in trouble with Rome if this thing blows up. Sends him back to Pilate. Luke 23, verse 7 through 12. And as soon as he knew that he belonged, as soon as Pilate knew that Jesus belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction because he was Galilean, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad because he had heard a lot about him. And now it was like, okay, now show me your powers. I want you to entertain me. For he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by Jesus. Then he questioned him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Jesus would not respond to Herod. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused Jesus before Herod. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked Jesus and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe that was to make mockery and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before they were at enmity between themselves, but now they had a common thing that they both were tied to. Point number four. Passion Friday. Can you imagine how tired Jesus must have been physically and emotionally? Passion Friday. Jesus is returned to Pilate, who finds no fault in him, and washes his hands of his execution, though signing off on the sentence, while regrettably, in exchange, releases Barabbas, a known convicted criminal. So what's happening here? Well, Pilate realizes I'm going to have to deal with this. But yet I want it to be clear. I don't find this man guilty. And whatever comes out of this, just know I'm only giving the people what you're asking for. But this is not something I want to do. I wash my hands up of it, though he still sentenced him to death. And then because one could be released, 
he released what the people called for, Barabbas. So now let's look at this. Luke 23, 13 through 25. And the plot thickens. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, You have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. He's talking about Jesus. And behold, I have examined him before you and have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof you accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, because he's innocent. For of necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. That was the law. So he was saying, this man is innocent. Let me release him in your feast and be done with this. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, away with Jesus, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and guess what? And for a murder was cast in prison. So Barabbas wasn't just a thief. He had not just committed some theft crime. He was a murderer, and he was in prison. And they said, give us Barabbas. Do you see how man is? Man would rather sentence a guilty person than release somebody that's innocent. That's just the hearts of men. That's the hearts of men. Man would rather release the guilty than to release one that is innocent. Verse 20 of Luke 23, Pilate therefore, ready to pull his hair out of his head, saying, you Jews, I don't know what to do with y'all. Therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them, said, wait a minute, you're not reasoning properly. What you're saying makes no sense. But they cried, saying, crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time. So this was not a hasty thing that Pilate did. Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. So he continues to, to, to reason with the people. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. Pilate said, okay, if that's what you want, if that's what you insist upon, then I give up. I'll give it to you. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, Barabbas, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will to be sentenced to death. Passion, point number five, Passion Friday. This is, this is quite a story, isn't it? And when you look at it in a sequential order, it really makes sense to understand that Jesus Christ paid an awesome price for our salvation. Passion Friday, Jesus carries his cross, aided by Simon the Cyrenian, to Calvary on Golgotha's Hill to be crucified between two thieves. Jesus walks the, the, the long pathway carrying that part of the cross, heavy, laden. They had already beaten him. They had already put a crown of thorns on his head. He was already bleeding. He was a bloody mess. And there he is carrying his cross for you and for me. Ladies and gentlemen, saints and friends, he was carrying the cross for the Roman soldiers. He was carrying the cross for the Jews who said, crucify him. He was carrying the cross for Barabbas. He was carrying the cross for Pilate. He was carrying the cross for Herod. He was carrying the cross for every man and every woman, every boy and girl. For the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Those that had preceded him, those who lived on that time, and those of us that would come later. He carried that cross 
Luke 23, 26 through verse 33. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon of Cyrenian coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. He helped Jesus carry it. And there followed of him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. They were crying. These women were saying, oh, don't do this. Oh, my goodness. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. I told you Jesus was waiting with weights. He was carrying the weight of these women that were lamenting for him, for those that knew that he was innocent. Verse 29 for behold, the days are coming, Jesus said, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For they do these things in a green tree. What shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors, or criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. They nailed him to the cross and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left hand. And now Jesus has been erected on the cross on Golgotha's hill, on, Mount, on Calvary, on a cross that he was innocent of. Point number six. Passion Friday, Jesus gives the seven last sayings from the cross. Let's go through these sayings. Luke 23, 34 through 38. The first saying Jesus gives in the morning. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let me just stop here and say, Jesus is being crucified. And Jesus is now praying for those crucifying him. Father, forgive them. I think it was even more than that. He was praying for all of us. For they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. This was put over the cross, a placard put there. That was the first saying. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Second saying, still in the morning. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on Jesus, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, here's the second saying, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Where's Jesus? On the cross. He's being crucified and he's ministering to the thief on the cross who demonstrates faith in Jesus Christ. John 19, verse 25, verses 2 through 7. The third saying of the cross, it's still morning. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, that's John, he saith unto his mother, third saying of the cross, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple, John, took Mary unto his own home. 
Matthew 27, verse 45 through 46. I pray this is blessing somebody. You live, live chat something in here. Live chat something. If this is blessing you, if this is helping you to understand and appreciate what Jesus has done and understanding the order that it was done in. Fourth saying, this is now the afternoon. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So all the sayings from now on will happen in that afternoon quadrant from 12 noon until 3 p.m. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. This is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? John 19, 28. Fifth saying, it's afternoon now. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. That was the fifth saying. John 19, verse 29 through 30. The sixth saying is afternoon. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Luke 23, 44 to 49. Seventh saying in the afternoon. Verse 44, and it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things that were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these sayings. Point number seven. Point number seven. Passion Friday. Jesus, now dead, was pierced in his side by a soldier, though his legs were not broken. And I should add, this was done by a Roman soldier. He was pierced in his side, though his legs were not broken. John 19, verse 31 through 37. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day. And that began not on Saturday like ours, but it began uh, when the sun went down on Friday evening. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers, just to make sure, with a spear, pierced his side, and forthwith came there out of blood and water. And he saw that it bare record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scriptures should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Passion, point number eight, Passion Friday. Point eight, Passion Friday. Somebody say hallelujah to God. And Jesus didn't halfway do this. He did it until it was done. And all that happened, scriptures had already spoken so that we they, they knew and we know truly this is the Son of God. Passion Friday, Jesus before sundown was buried in a borrowed tomb by Joseph of Arimathea, followed by the women from Galilee that stood at the cross. Roman 23, I'm sorry, Luke 23, verses 50 through 56. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor. And he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He didn't participate in what the others had done. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. 
This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus and took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. And that day was a preparation and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Good Lord, I reckon. Give me just two minutes and I'm done. Here's the review. Passion Friday. Jesus is taken from the preliminary arraignment with Annas and second trial before the Sanhedrin and Caiaphas to Pilate, the governor, to be judged and sentenced to death. Jesus now being falsely accused before Pilate by the chief priests and elders, so condemned, with, 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 with so condemned Judas became for his unjust role until he hung himself. Jesus sent by Pilate to appear before Herod the jurisdictional leader over Galilee trivializes the case and returns Jesus to Pilate to handle the case. Jesus is returned to Pilate who finds no fault in him and washes his hands of his execution, though signing off on the sentence while regrettably in exchange releases Barabbas, a known convicted criminal. Jesus carries his cross, aided by Simon the Cyrenian, to Calvary on Golgotha's hill to be crucified between two thieves. Jesus gives the seven last sayings from the cross. Jesus, now dead, was pierced in his side by a soldier, though his legs were not broken. And number eight, Jesus, before sundown, was buried in a borrowed tomb by Joseph of Arimathea followed by the women from Galilee that stood at the cross. Let us pray. Father, we bless you now for this rich story, this story that never gets old. We ask you now to create in us a sense of appreciation for the awesome price you paid for our salvation. We bless you and we worship you and we adore you for who you are and for all that you have done and will do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please, please edify one another. Edify those that will read and hear later. Please hit the like button and chat something in there. Share something with someone that God is so good that he did all of that for me. He would not come down from the cross just to save himself. He decided to die just to save me, to save you, and to save me. Give God the glory. Give him the praise. Live chat something, and we'll see you on tomorrow, which represents the Sabbath, which represents Passion Saturday. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. We'll see you on tomorrow. In Jesus' name, be blessed.